This is the actress Marriott Hartley. She was born Mary Loretta Hartley on June 21, 1940. Marriott grew up in an affluent community of Weston, Connecticut, not far from New York City. Her parents were Paul and Mary Hartley. Paul was an account executive and artist. Mary was a manager in sales. They called her Polly. Marriott had a younger brother, also named Paul, and he later will become an author and research philosopher. Marriott's maternal granddad, John B. Watson, was a noted behavioral psychologist who taught and believed that children should never be held or cuddled. They should not be heard or seen. They're permitted one light kiss on the cheek at bedtime. Her granddad's belief will cause serious problems to family members in later life. In 1990, Marriott stated in her autobiography entitled Breaking the Silence that her psychological problems with bipolar stems directly from her granddad's practical application of his theories. As a joke, she said that since she was not allowed to be held or touched as a child, she nursed her own son till he got his driving license. <laughs> At the age of 11, Marriott joined the Little Children's Theater. Her desire was to be around actors, even little ones, where they showed affection and it was a place to find comfort, away from her parents whose drinking was tearing the family apart. By the time she was 13, she was performing at the White Barn Theater in Norwalk, Connecticut. Now, during this time, in public, everything seemed good. However, at home, her parents were in trouble. Marriott's dad was drinking and lost his job. She will later believe that he was manic depressant. She said her dad was charismatic, friendly, and was very funny when he was drinking. He'll later commit suicide. Her mother went to work at a dress shop to support the family but she soon began to drink in order to escape. When her mother drank, her attitude changed for the worse. She'll attempt suicide several times, and because of the way she was raised, she couldn't stand to be touched. Polly will eventually make it out of her depression and live and love her daughter. However, Mariette will have an uncle and a cousin that will become suicide victims. By the age of 15, Marriott had already been experimenting with alcohol and said that she was a good girl by day and a bad girl by night. Through her acting, she won a college scholarship to Carnegie Tech in Pittsburgh in 1957, but she dropped out a year later to join actor John Hausman's theater group at the American Shakespeare Festival. In 1959, Marriott will marry John Sevens. Marriott claimed that she married out of pity. He had claimed that he had brain cancer with only a short time to live. She found out later it was a lie. She stated that he was the one that wanted to go to Hollywood, not her. She didn't like California and wanted to remain a stage actress. She said she got a $75 ticket for jaywalking when she first got to California that everybody jaywalked in New York. A friend's dad recommended that she contact the William Morris Agency. Believe it or not, within four days she was at MGM interviewing with director Sam Peckinpah. They liked one another right off. Could have been because he was crazy too. Mariette will receive the part of Elsa in what some say is the best Western ever made. Ride the High Country with veteran Western actors Joel McCrae and Randolph Scott. An ex-veteran, Joel McCrae, is hired to transport gold from a mining camp. He hires Randolph Scott, an old friend, as his partner to help. Not knowing that his friend is planning on double-crossing him and taking the gold. When McCrae and Scott reach the mining camp to pick up the gold, a young girl, Elsa, had run away from home to marry Billy Hammond, James Drury. But she finds out that she was to be shared by Billy's three brothers. 
Mariette said that during the filming, they kept stuffing her front trying to make her bigger. Each day they added a little more. They finally decided to stop when I could no longer walk. The film had a rape scene which actually scared Mariette. It reminded her of what she was going through every night at home. Her husband would beat her often and had a way of making her think that everything was her fault. She told no one of what she was going through. She stated she loved Randolph Scott, but especially Joel McRae. She asked him once what he did to prepare for a scene. He said movies are not filmed in sequel, so I always read the scene before the one I'm doing, so I'll know where I'm supposed to be mentally, and more important, don't forget to suck in your gut. He was a dream to work with, she said. When asked if she ever watched Ride to High Country anymore, she said yes on TCM. Her marriage disintegrated completely when she learned that she was pregnant. There was no way that she was going to bring a baby into this marriage. She knew what that meant. After an abortion, she decided it was time to get rid of an abusive husband. She filed for divorce. She said that one of her proudest moments was when her dad, watching the credits when her name appeared on Ride to High Country. And he said, well, kiddo, you did it. That same year, Marriott made her debut TV appearance on Gunsmoke. It'll be the first of several. She enjoyed doing Gunsmoke and said that James Arnaz was very kind. And in her first episode, she played Clary on the episode of Cotter's Girl. After her divorce, her parents came to live with her. They were both unable to work, and Mariette had to make the living. On July the 2nd, 1963, while at the apartment they shared at Burlington and Sunset, Mariette said that her daddy was in his bedroom and was unable to find his glasses. He said to her, Honey, I can't find my glasses. She found them under the sheets. She felt that there was something a little off, but she went back into the next room to talk to her mother. It was no more than five minutes when they heard the gunshot. Paul Henry Hartley had taken his own life. Marriott and her mother had to clean the room themselves. She said the smell and the blood on sheets, walls, and floor is something you never forget. Back home, the papers had stated that Paul had died from natural causes. They kept his suicide a secret for 25 years until after her mother's death. Trying to hide the stigma and guilt that goes along with a family member committing suicide. Incredibly, two weeks after Paul's death, her mother attempted suicide in the same bed and in the same apartment. Eventually, Polly will slowly recover from her depression. After such a traumatic experience, what do you do? You stay busy by taking all the parts that you can find, and that's what she did. She played a lead role in Drums in Africa with Frankie Avalon. In 1964, she had a prominent supporting role in Alfred Hitchcock's Marnie with Tippa Hedren and Sean Connery. At one time or another, Hartley played in every major TV show on television. In 1965, she did 32 episodes of Dr. Clara Morton on Peyton Place. She was a favorite of Bonanza. At one time or another, she played the part of love interest to Little Joe, Hoss, and even Ben. She adored Dan Blocker, she said. She once played an Indian maid involved with one of the Cartwright boys, and a year and a half later, she played a sophisticated lady involved with Ben. She said the studio got a letter addressed to Ben from a fan complaining that he didn't recognize before getting involved with this woman that she was the Indian maid that had had an affair with his son a year or so earlier. After running from one acting job to another and becoming burnt out, 
One day she found herself standing on the corner of Wilshire and Bedford in Beverly Hills and wondering why she didn't have more than $1,000 in the bank. Not wanting to ask for help, she seen an executive dress shop across the street and got a job selling dresses. That way she could still do theater at night. She did good selling dresses, she said, but in 1968, she got the opportunity to be cast in the original Star Trek episode. And in 1970, she'll star with Lee Van Cleef in Mercero. She said in one scene, Lee had put some kind of oil all over him. I guess he thought it made him look more sexy. It only made him slick, so when he tried to hold me, I slid out of his arms. In 1972, Marriott played Arilla Adams in The Magnificent Seven Ride, where a group helped defend a Mexican town from De Toro and his band of outlaws. By 1974, Hartley was back making commercials. While in New York, she met her future husband, Patrick Borivan, a French producer and director of commercials. The next year, on August the 30th, 1975, Patrick and Marriott will have a son they named Sean. This is a late picture of Sean, Marriott, and grandson. Sean will graduate from film school and become a film producer. In 1977, Marriott starred with Carol O'Connor in an NBC Hallmark Hall of Fame entitled The Last Hoorah where a big city mayor runs a powerful political machine and wants to keep control, although his age and his health is against him. Marriott earned her first Emmy Award nomination for her performance. The next year in 1978, June 22nd, the boy Rivens had a baby girl they named Justine. Justine will grow up to become a singer and actress. She has appeared on TV's Law and & Order and the movie The Learning Curve. Also in 1978, Marriott will star with Bill Bixby in The Incredible Hook. The TV series was directed by her husband, Patrick Boyriven, where she marries Bill Bixby's character, who comes to Hawaii to seek help from Dr. Carolyn Fields, a psychiatrist played by Marriott. She'll win the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Dramatic Series for her performance. Around this time, she was asked to come in and do a one-day commercial shoot for Polaroid with James Garner. Polaroid's One Step is the simplest camera in the world. You don't have to focus or anything. I thought this was the simplest camera. That was. This is. I just snapped the shutter and I've got the picture. Where? Well, I have to get it developed. And I just press this button. A motor hands me the picture. And I see it in minutes. It's pretty. But mine's just as simple up to when the picture comes out. What kind of logic is that? Mine. Doesn't make any sense. You mean you don't understand it? Get the one step. When they kept calling her back to do one more and then another, she began to realize what was happening. This is Polaroid's new Time Zero One Step. Pretty. Why is it black? Oh, so you'll know it's the Time Zero One Step. And here's the world's fastest developing color. You see it in seconds now, not minutes. Look at that color. But why a Time Zero One Step? It comes with a pack of Time Zero Super Color Film and this made for each other pack. Certainly are made for each other. Just like coffee and cream. Rolls and Royce. Or me and you. Try ham and cheese. The commercial chemistry between her and Garner was catching on. Thanks to James Garner, who said that he had put into his contract that she be paid more money. She said after that, she could work 16 days a year and make a good living. That one day's work turns into 250 commercials over a seven-year period. To complicate things, in 1979, Marriott was asked to appear on The Rockford Files a TV show that starred James Garner. There was a scene where the two was to kiss. The paparazzi discovered the scene was to take place. They took pictures from long distance and sold it to a rag magazine 
and stated that the two was having a secret affair. It wasn't true. Mariette will win the Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Dramatic Series for her appearance on The Rockford Files. In 1983, she'll reunite with Bill Bixby on CBS's sitcom Good Night Beantown. It's about an anchor on a TV station in Boston that's losing viewers, played by Bixby. The station wants to pair him with a female anchor, played by Hartley, Bill's character is not pleased with the change. Now, the next year, in 1984, Hartley will play Barbara Lewis in Silence of the Heart, where a young 16-year-old boy commits suicide. The true story touches Mariette, so much reminding her of her own family. After this movie, Hartley began helping others that had lost loved ones from suicide mostly through forming and becoming the spokesperson for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. In 1987, she co-hosted The Morning Program on CBS with Roland Smith. She did The Morning Program for 10 months. The only thing good about it, she said, was that she was back in New York where she could whistle for a cab. Marriott told a story about her dad teaching her how to whistle for a New York taxi cab. He told her that with her legs, they would never stop. She'd have to learn to whistle. He even had her go through a dry run. She whistled and here comes a taxi. She rode around the block and then back to where she started from. She said that she asked the cab driver, Did you hear my whistle? No, lady. I seen your legs. She said, I love New York cabbies. In 1990, Marriott wrote Breaking the Silence about her dysfunctional family while growing up. She'll fight alcoholism, depression, and bipolarism as an adult. In 1995, Marriott will file for divorce from Patrick on the grounds of irreconcilable differences. The divorce will be granted in 1996. In 1999 through 2001, she'll play as Sister Mary Daniel in 10 episodes of the TV soap opera One Life to Live. In 2003 through 2011, Marriott played Lauren Scary in six episodes of Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Nine years after her divorce from Patrick Boy Riven, she met and married actor and producer Jerry Soroka in 2005. The two met while wading through Hollywood's dating scene. It took a while, but Jerry's never-given-up charm worked. The two will work together in several projects of their own. In 2006, Marriott will perform in a one-woman show entitled, If You Get to Bethlehem, You've Gone Too Far. It enacted 11 characters from her childhood, living at home with acute depression and alcoholism. The title of her act came from her friend, once actress Dolores Hart, who once appeared with Elvis, but gave acting up to join a convent. The directions Loris gives to her convent is, If you get to Bethlehem, you've gone too far. Marriott Hartley is as lively and beautiful as ever, staying busy and doing what she can do for children with depression, and trying to dispel the stigma attached to suicide. The Catholic religion, along with others, have furthered this stigma by saying that if you commit suicide, you're going to hell. They forget that Samson asked God to allow him to commit suicide by pulling the pillars down around himself and God's enemies. Permission granted. Marriott Hartley is an Emmy Award-winning actress and has been nominated five times. She has appeared in over a hundred and 25 TV shows and 22 movies. Her star is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, 
located at 7020 Hollywood Boulevard.